Hello, um, these are my flea market finds uh, from the last few weeks and I want to try and show you all this stuff. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. There's some nice mid-century stuff here and some newer stuff and some older stuff and let's get right to it. Okay, first off we start with something really cool. Italian mid-century pottery. Uh, fantastic piece. Look at these African ladies. Look at the texture with sgraffito technique and really rough texture. Almost resembles the African earth. Uh, this is made by Fratelli Fanciulacci in Italy. Um, how do I know? There is a really good uh, Facebook group that they can tell you what all these numbers mean when it comes to Italian pottery. Don't just assume everything is Bitosi and Fratelli Panciulacci. You really gotta do your research and find out what it is. So this is from the Africa series. This is why this is somewhat more desirable. Uh, if it was a different pattern, maybe it wouldn't do so well, but somebody's gonna buy this. There's collectors for the Africa series. Uh, next up, I'm going to show you this Nefertiti bust. Really nice cool thing. Obviously this is not an artifact, this is made of cast resin I think. This is a reproduction, a repro reproduction that was made for uh, the Louvre, Louvre Museum in Paris. Um, you could probably buy this at their gift shop or whatnot, but this cost a pretty penny back in the day when they sold it. Um, so I imagine I can get some nice money for it. These next three items, the candle holders, this fish knife, 12 fish knives, this uh, crumb span, it's not a dust pan, it's a crumb span, and this oval, oval dish. Uh, these are all really cool silver plated uh, items from uh, Christoffel in France, Christoffel of Paris. Company still around today, very high-end company. Um, some of the patterns they make, they've been making them for over a hundred years and they're very successful. Um, let's start with this. This is the candle holders. You can probably see some of the markings right there. Um, this is really interesting how it's how it almost looks like it's gilded, but it's really not. You can just see some of the brass underneath coming out, but still good stuff. It, it'll do all right. This is a crumbs tray. Very nice patina. Amazing condition for the plating. Uh, I wish I had the the little brush that came with this. Uh, you know, you were supposed to use this to clean up your... The valet would use it, your servant would use it to clean up your crumbs on the table. Uh, next off is the Christoffel serving, uh, oval serving dish. Very nice luster, you can't really see it in this light, but amazing luster patina. The plating on this is in really nice shape. My images don't do it justice. The thing with Christoffel, the, the the plating has to be in good shape. If the plating is gone, eh, you won't do so well. But look at this, look at these fish, fish knives. These are from the from the Rubans pattern, pattern. The key to finding out the prices for these is always finding out the pattern. And then you can look up completed listings, figure out how much they sell for. These are 12 fish knives. I wish I did a before video or at least a photo to show you how nasty these are. But I clean them up, nothing crazy, just Toothpaste and dish soap and they cleaned up amazingly and they're good to go now. They're disinfected, so to speak. Uh, cool mid-century Swedish uh, bent plywood bed. You, this could go above your bed or you could use this as a reading light. Uh, some condition issues right there. It's not Alvarado or, or Marcarid or anything like that, you know. I think it's something... Not such an expensive manufacturer, but still pretty nice. Pretty nice. This would go well in the mid-century Scandinavian home. As a matter of fact, somebody from Japan contacted me about this one today and they were asking me to ship it over there. So we'll see if the deal goes through. This is really special. If I had six or eight of these coasters, this would go for seven, six, seven, four, five hundred dollars. Yes, that's what I said. Hundreds of dollars. Very nice from the 50s, Piero Fornassetti from the Conchiliorum series. Uh, unfortunately, I just found one, but I'm happy to have found this one. This series, the Conchiliorum, is a seashell series, and they show you the seashell, each, each 
plate is different, I guess. Each coaster is different. The seashell name with the Latin scientific name. I'm very happy about this one. I, I love this one. It's only my second time finding for Nasetti all these years. Um, you'd say this is Japanese, right? No, it's not. This is a very nice late mid-century Swedish ceramic from Hoganas of Sweden um, teapot. Two liter, very nice size, designed by Marie-Louise Helgren. Uh, if you sit on this, if you sit on these long enough and you're patient, you'll find a good buyer for them. I've had them in the past. Uh, let's stay in Scandinavia. What do we have here? It's an Aluminia. Um, I think Marie Johnson is the name of the designer for this. Aluminia from the Ter uh, Tenera series. Aluminia was later bought by Royal Copenhagen. Um, very nice flask, Fayence. Hard to find these these days, you know, it's just, there are some collectors out there for this stuff. I couldn't leave it behind. Forgot to show you. Uh, if you really want to talk about being a snob, this is it. Danish Jorg Jensen stainless steel shoehorn. God knows how much this cost brand new, but couldn't leave this one behind either. Uh, Sweden, still. Unfortunately, I got some condition issues with this one, but this is... Such a cool find, one of a kind. Rohrstrand bowl, designed by uh, Karl Haris Stahane and uh, Aino Laukanen. If I named that, I don't know if I said those names correctly. Uh, it says unique there, unique, article 712. I think it's from the Toro series, but these are one of a kind. Somebody's gonna snatch this up because you won't find another one like it. There isn't another one like it in the world. Uh, Still Scandinavia, little Costa Boda Atoll candle holder. Same thing, I couldn't leave this behind. Maybe I should have, but who knows? Uh, have I shown you? New? Have I shown Netherlands Leerdam glass? Leerdam glass makes a lot of utilitarian. Let me hold this somehow so you can see the signature. They make a lot of utilitarian stuff, but uh, this is made by a lady called Floris. Uh, made them, signed over there, 1973. Uh, this stuff sells. She's a modernist glass lady, <laughs> artist. Um, look at this, the cloudiness of the glass. This is really cool, you know, you, and the shape is really cool. Some of the more colorful stuff from her tends to bring more money, but I'll be okay when this sells too. Next. Uh, crystal glassware, look at that. One set, two sets. Well, this set has three smaller ones and six. The six larger ones are water goblets, but I guess you could use them for wine. And the smaller wine ones are white wine uh, glasses. Where do I get my information? Online. This is how officially the manufacturer uh, calls them. These are from France, from I didn't study French in school. I'm not sure if this is how you're supposed to pronounce this. Uh, Daum, Daum, France. I hope you can see this right there, signature. Uh, very high quality crystal. I spotted them, I knew they had to be something good. I got them for a song, happy about it. You gotta pack these well in order to send them out to your to the new home, but if you pack them right, you'll make money for sure. Also, France, French crystal. I also spotted this in a sea of cheap utilitarian glassware, but I knew right away they had to be at least a little bit special. Classic shape. You wouldn't think these are anything, but the quality is right there. And these are, I'm not sure if this is gonna be able to be seen over there. These are Baccarat, you can kind of see the mark over there. It's Baccarat, I've had Baccarat. This is called Perfection. The pattern is called Perfection. Very cool stuff. Um, I actually have a box for this ready to go and uh, I'm gonna have to double box this. You gotta pack these really well, like I said. Now, this one last thing I wanna show you is this uh, Turkish rug from the Hamadan. Uh, no, it's Iranian. Sorry, this Iranian rug from the Hamadan region. Uh, it's a Merhaban or Lilihan. I've got multiple <laughs> information 
sources that stated it's anything different. Now, there's a lot of crappy, crappy rugs out there, but every once in a while, you might find, you might find a good one. This is from the 1950s, um, and look at the quality of that, that uh, I worked. You know, doesn't have any, other than the fringes being missing, doesn't really have any condition issues. Uh, look at these colors. Maybe the light is not the best, but this is a runner. This is a approximately three feet wide by, um, what was that? 10 feet, I think, or 11 feet, something like that. Uh, very cool stuff. Hopefully all this sells. It's all listed on my, uh, in my eBay store i posted the link below this and more over there um i'm hoping you guys enjoyed this and um i'll see you maybe next time thank you so much